Hell yes, there we go. Ah! <laughs> ah! Okay. <laughs> All right. This is not the third time, it's the first take. Let's go. Okay, friends, we have a lot to talk about today. We have five new guitars to show. So uh, I'm gonna be try and be quick, but first, here's the song. I'm gonna rock out for a little bit, okay? It's just not my Monday morning, it's Sunday. <laughs> it's not my Sunday morning. What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday of Ola. At least the microphone is f***ing on right now. There was plenty of mistakes, the first take was freaking perfect except that the microphone wasn't on. But you know what? F*** it. F*** it all. It's just Sunday morning. No one cares anyways about my song. My songs are shitty. Anyways, we were supposed to talk about the, the, the guitars, the guitars that I'm about to show. So, this past Friday and also now, uh, yesterday and today and tomorrow, we are uh, launching uh, a couple of new guitars in our AB 2.6 and 7 Mark II. It's the Mark II of the AB 2.6 and 7s. And what does the Mark II mean? Well, it means that we changed up the specs a little bit while still keeping a great, great fair price. So one of the biggest things is that we have locking tuners on these AB 2.6 and 7 Mark II guitars right now. Let me show you the lineup because it's pretty sick. Okay, first of all, these two. AB 2.6, AB 2.7 in pearl white matte right there. Insanely cool looking. And then we also have these two seven strings, the AB 2.7C and the AB 2.7 CAR or Candy Apple Red right there, Mark II. Both with them with locking tuners. And dude, it, these are just insanely awesome guitars for a very fair price. Last but not least, we have this little asshole right there, which is called the AB 2.6 BPM and it's yes, it's one of those things. You can see it right there. It's purple right there. Now it's blue. Boo? Purple. Blue. Purple. Blue. It's uh, it's freaking sick, you guys. Take oh, take a look at that. Thank you. <laughs> what a chaotic fucking intro, you guys. Anyways, let's head into the news. All right, there's right. The Sunday with all the raffle. It starts right now. Today we're raffling out this Chug Tab book. It's been signed by Ola England the Swede. The raffle happens in the premier chat, okay? So not in the comments. You write exclamation mark raffle in the chat and you have a chance to win this. The raffle will be open for a couple of minutes, but the winner will be announced at the end of the show. I'll see you there, okay? Gibson releases their victory models that they once teased last year. It's not a new shape. It's not a new guitar. But uh, it hasn't been a part of Gibson's roster for I, I don't know how long, very long. They're now back with them, created in response to player requests for the return of this 80s era cult favorite. Gibson Channel Super Strat and PRS vibes as it revives its victory model for the first time in 40 years. Damn. And take a look at that. It's, uh. Yeah. What headstock does it have? Oh, it has the hockey stick headstock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the old headstock looked like this. Just gotta wait for it. So this is the old headstock right there. It looks like a 
like an alligator a little bit. <laughs> no, an alligator head. It has the alligator head, but the new ones have the Gibson hockey stick. Okay, okay, let's take a look. Features a newly contoured double cut mahogany body with a satin nitro lacquer finish, as well as a mahogany neck that's topped with a 24 fret fingerboard. 25 and a half inch scale. Okay, very important. With the hockey stick uh, headstock. Yeah, it's not too bad, I must say. The Victor certainly carries a certain PRS flair and can be particularly compared to the Vela, which was also uh, recently revived. What's the Vela? I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Yeah. I understand. The Victor model starts at uh, 1999. And. Comparing oranges to apples. If this is a go at the PRS, I must say I think I much more prefer the PRS in this case. I mean, it's it's its own shape for sure, which is you know I can commend that. But uh, is it a good shape? I think it's a really good shape for a lot of particular people. Okay, holy shit, Ola, president of the United States of the world. Let's go. Black Label Society and Sack Wild releases a new single called The Gallows. And uh, I'm not actually sure if they're announcing anything with this. I think it's sort of incredible that Sack can pull something like this off. He's just such an incredibly busy guy. With the Pantera tribute, he also has Sack Sabbath. And he's, uh, he's just like back to back touring with him. How? What does he have the time to write music, man? So uh, I think that what Sack is doing right here is that there hasn't been a lot of noise from the Black Label Society camp in a long while. Just shove out a single out there, uh, you know, for the fans. And I think that's very cool. The song is cool as hell. I mean, classic Sack vibes. I mean, Black Label vibes, I would say. Oh, I, I just cut at the solo. People will be incredibly pissed off about that. The news! Let's continue. So, I caught this in an interview with a Blackie Lawless of Wasp. This is from Guitar World. A recent revelation is that you're okay with using backing tracks live. What will fans be hearing at the Wasp show? So, uh, there's been talks about Wasp now using backing tracks for, uh, you know, for, for their shows. Uh, let's read on. Why is it okay to use backing tracks? It's because we don't have the personnel. We were doing stuff from the Crimson Idol and there's a hundred piece orchestra going on there. Taking that on tour would be impossible financially. Uh, great point. The first time we did Crimson Idol Live, we did it without the orchestration. Did it sound good? Yeah. But when we did it with the orchestration, I stood in the middle of the room and rehearsed and I swear to you, it was like a religious experience. If I'm a fan, this is what I want to hear. So basically what he's saying, he's using backing tracks to elevate the experience of the audience. You know, things that are supporting the main band, I would say. So that's the reason I do it. It enhances the experience. I want people to hear the records the way they were intended to be heard. Not like a fash... Oh, this is a word I can't say. Faxi... Faximal. Faximal. Google Translate. Let's go. Facsimile. Facsimile. Oh shit, okay. In Swedish, facsimile. Facsimile. <laughs> Do you have to censor that? Facsimile. 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 Hmm? Yes, let's continue on. <laughs> That's fair. People assumed it was your voice and the guitars being simulated with tracks. All somebody has to do is record and listen to all the mistakes. Then they would understand. You can try as hard as you can, man, but you're gonna screw up. Rock and roll was never meant to be perfect, and even if you try, it ain't gonna be. Why I wanted to talk about this is because this is something that I'm thinking a lot of now when, uh, you know, about my touring situation next year. I'm going as an opening act for, for Burnt and Charles Bertu on Escape the Internet Tour. And it's gonna be a very tightly packed tour and there's not enough room to bring a lot of people so we have to be really efficient about what we bring that's you know why have you seen me do all this uh, setup thing here i want to bring a very very small rig with me that will fit the bus uh, that we share with uh, you know uh, two other drummers and you know all the people that needs their extra stuff and uh, i was thinking about this too like i would love to bring out someone to do keyboards and all that but it's just easier to have it all on backing track you know, as long as the rest of us play uh, live and all that, you know, for Stars and Ponies, for instance, which is heavily synth wave in the background where you have a lot of blippity blops and shit like that. If we would remove that from the live experience, it, it wouldn't be the same song. 
you know? So I'm definitely going to have, you know, backing tracks on this live tour happening. But obviously the, the, the lead guitar, the bass, the drums, they will be, they will be live. So it's to elevate the experience. And I thought that was a really good point right here. I don't think anyone disagrees that elevating the experience, people want this. Like if someone would replace the drummer with a backing track, that's a problem. If someone would replace the guitar, the lead guitar player with a backing track, that's also a problem. So I think, I think we all agree on this, no? Good, good point, Ola. All right, I saved the drama for last. Dave Grohl announces the birth of a child outside his marriage. And I can't believe that I'm reporting on this. Uh, this is not what uh, Sunday with Ola is about, to be honest. So, uh, dude. <sighs> Whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> Shit. Also, I didn't want to speak about Linkin Park for the third freaking time uh, in a Sunday with Ola. But I guess here we are right now. Apparently, Chester Bennington's son is pissed off about the Linkin Park reunion. Chester Bennington's son Jamie has come out against the Linkin Park reunion with plenty of harsh uh, accusations in a series of Instagram stories. Uh, Jamie criticized Linkin Park's decision to hire Armstrong despite allegedly knowing her involvement with Scientology. He later accused Linkin Park of quietly erased... A few moments later... Uh, okay. I mean, that's just... Is that a dog? Perfect timing. I hate this drama bullshit. Let's bring in the dog. That's just better. Pixie. Hey, welcome. Yo. Let's bring down the camera down here. This is just better content, you guys. What the hell? Let's not talk about fucking dramas and bullshit and Chester Bennington's here and Chester Bennington's there. This is what it's all about. A happy dog. Come here. Yeah, come here. Yo, man. Here. <laughs> you have to give attention to the dog, so she's constantly happy. She deserves it because she gives so much to my family, and it's very important. What is that sound you're making right now? Let's listen. <laughs> Ah. Where were we? Drama? Okay, let's just move on. I fucking hate drama. Dude, I have another drama piece right here, but you know what? Fuck off. Bad news. <laughs> oh shit. Holy shit, you guys, it's unboxing day. It's not gonna be a proper Sunday without a proper unboxing. Actually, today it's fairly good looking in here, I must say. I mean, it's been chaos at the office for the past months, I would say, but right now it's just, yeah, man, it's clean. Same thing out there. I've been, look at this. Usually it's just. This place is just full of boxes and shit, but it's... Well, there's boxes over there, but you know, we, we've been trying to keep things clean around here as we're getting guests and all that. And also now when my back is better, I feel like I have the energy to actually clean up after myself. So that's a good thing. All right, what do we have here? I'm going to put this on the Angle Savage right there. Look at that. Hello, sir. You guys know I release vinyls and CDs and tab books and all that, t-shirts, all of that for oldanglishshop.com. Well, there's a new era coming. There's a new way of listening to music, you guys. You have no idea. You know, CDs, vinyls, and uh, CDs, internet, streaming. All of that is in the past. That's how boomers listen to music nowadays. Well, there's a new contender in town, a new format in town. <laughs> and it's right here in this box. It's a ghetto blaster, let's go. Hell yeah, how cool is this? Oh my goodness. Look at that, you guys. It's a boom box. 
You know, I had something like this back in the day when I was young. Uh, I also had a Walkman, of course. That's how I kind of listened to uh, cassettes back in the day. And uh, the thing is that cassettes are somewhat coming back. So I wanted to get myself a cassette player for this. And I actually have a bunch of cassettes that I need to listen to. So I bought this boombox. And I think this boombox uh, is capable of, yes, playing MP3 on cassette. What? I don't understand. So it is battery powered. Oh, it's those old big ass batteries. Okay, I'm not going to be able to use that today. But there is an option to plug it in like a normal human being through, you know, uh, power. <laughs> Actually, this could be a cool prop in this room. I mean, it sort of fits the, the style of this, uh, you know, this big boss office right here. Oh, there's, okay, there's a USB input right there. And also, I think a memory card slot. So if you have MP3s, good for you. I actually have a cassette right here. Let's listen. I'm sort of excited, actually. Let's push uh, play. Cassette was my first medium. Uh, when I was listening to music back in the day. And, uh, you know, I could do uh, all sorts of mixtapes and shit like that. Hell yeah, it's working. Look at that. And the VU means. Okay, well, let me try some radio. Radio. Oh shit. I shut it off. What is this? This sucks. Oh my god. Turn it off. Uh, I need to find Alright. I think it's probably gonna be the, the closest I will get to a mail station. I'm not even sure what it is. But dude, how cool is this? I'm gonna be the coolest guy on the beach. 2025. So there you go, a little fun unboxing for you right there. Look at that. Cassettes, baby. So out of the blue last week, I got to speak with Devin Townsend. Uh, it was a little bit of an unprepared Zoom call, but I got a chance to sit down for him for like 20 minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll do a small little segment here for the Son of Ola, but if you want to check out the full interview, go to my second channel, Ola Englund channel number two. But here's a short little talk with Devin Townsend about his new album, Power Nerd. All right, so I'll try and and and, and uh, pretend that we're... Uh, oh, what's up? Hey, buddy! Hey, man, what's up? Oh, Good my God. Long time. Holy cow. Damn. Dude, yeah. how, how are you doing? You look good. Every day is a gift. I look good? Oh my god, this camera must be uh, broken. <laughs> no, I, I feel good, man. I'm, uh, I, uh, I look like a melted version of myself when I was 25. <laughs> you have a new uh, song and single. <laughs> uh, uh, Power Nerd that I Power Nerd. saw the video for just now. And also you're re uh, releasing an album the 25th of October called Power yes. Nerd. Tell us about it then. What's, what's it all about? Power Nerd is one of four records. In about 2008, I had done uh, something called Devon Townsend Project, which right. was indicative of, you know, artistically trying to represent a big period of change in my life. Mm. And what tends to happen when I go through big periods of change is the music tends to come out in four different directions. You know, there's like a wild card, there's a complicated heavy thing, there's a straightforward thing, and there's a sort of uh, meditative thing. Uh, back then, that was represented by Key, Addicted, Deconstruction, and Ghost. Mm. And now here we are, 17 years later, 15 years later, whatever it is. And uh, essentially, I'm doing that same process once more uh, with another four-record process that uh, includes Power Nerd as the beginning, um, uh, 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 sort of a musical opera thing called The Moth, okay. a very strange sort of alien pop music thing called Axolotl, and then... Uh, a meditational uh, project called Dream Peace that mm. is hand in hand with this uh, YouTube series of me flying through the universe in a spaceship. And Power Nerd is one of these. <laughs> in regards to Power Nerd, I read that you try to not overthink uh, mm -hmm. the songs for Power Nerd. Yeah. Explain that a little bit. Yeah, well, all the other stuff is so overthought yeah. that uh, I figured that 
the audience that I've had for all these years have been just so nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's a word that springs to mind. And and tolerant would be another word because I tend to I tend to be more surprised by what comes out of me than anybody else. I don't plan it, so I'll be like, oh shit, I guess this is a country record, or I guess this is an ambient record, or I guess this is a death metal record, or whatever. Like, I never know. So most of the time when I release something, it's with, you know, it's through my fingers, sort of thinking to the audience, like, thank you for the patience, because here's something super fucked up. <laughs> and uh, Power Nerd functions as the first of these four records, because I know that the complications of these next three records are so over the top. Yeah. That I figured that the best way to start would be a peace offering. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. We keep on rehearsing in here, and uh, actually, I recorded with two more cameras other than the 360 camera, but I mistakenly uh, erased the material. That happens sometimes. I'm terribly sorry for that. But as we are uh, rehearsing and we're started building up the sound and the production of all of this, I was thinking that maybe we should do like a, a member exclusive live stream at some point. Would you guys be interested in that? Let me know in the comment section. I think that would be a really cool thing uh, in before the, the gigs, you know, because we're probably going to do rehearsals at least once every other week and stuff like that. And maybe it could be nice for you guys to see what happens. Sunday with Ola Ref Challenge, where you guys take the drums from the intro of Sunday with Ola and you make your own refs. We're checking out Sunday with Ola 205 contender Tom Lewis right now. Let's freaking go. Boom. And also, you don't have to have a solo guitar to be able to uh, be a part of the Rift Challenge. Oh shit! I hope that wasn't the Seymour Duncan that was blowing that smoke out there. Look! Dude, awesome new setup, man, must say. Hell yeah. 
What is he using? He's using a quad cortex, the boss wireless, and a Seymour Duncan Power Stage 170. Dude, I just released a video like that this past week. Click up here. You can go check it out. Dude, the integration of all my videos. It okay. Shut up, Ola. Hell yeah. Tom Lewis, everyone. If you want to be featured in the Sun with Ola contender on, on one of these shows right here, Download the drums in the description of this video. Swola 206 drums. Write your own riffs. Upload to YouTube. Hashtag Swola 206. I might see you in the next Son of Ola. Huh? How about that? All right, question of the day is where you guys ask me questions and I respond to them in a good manner. You put the questions in the comment section of this video, okay? From Galaxy Bulldozer. Hey Ola, in the beginning of your YouTube channel, you mentioned once that for new bands it doesn't make sense to put out a whole album. They only have to put out some videos on YouTube. How's your opinion about the announcement today? Uh, best regards, a diehard fan. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I don't think I said necessarily that they only have to put out some videos at YouTube, uh, but I've been for a long time an advocate of not releasing full albums today. Uh, or not, not... Let me rephrase. Not release a full album and then just you know, put all your cards into this one full album. And this is something I said, I, I think the clip is from a Tolman uh, clinic that I have, or a workshop I had, where I basically said, or very harshly said that albums are dead. Not in the, 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 uh, the uh, way of the format, because I personally love the album format, but for releasing as, you know, an independent band, uh, releasing an album is uh, very dangerous in my opinion. Why is it dangerous? Well, it's because if you were as a new band, put in a lot of effort, a lot of time and effort and heart into uh, writing and making, creating an album, when you release the album, that piece of news that you have is gone immediately. It's just one chance of news. I, I see it as opportunities for, for news or for, uh, it, I see it as opportunities, basically. W releasing a full album, that's one opportunity. With how things are moving today, which is, you know, very fast, very saturated, there's a lot of bands, bands out there that want to uh, get the same view, uh, the same listeners and viewers as you. Uh, you know, we're competing of uh, other bands' time, basically. So releasing an album and then just be done with it, it's, it's not a very strategical way of uh, releasing music nowadays. And uh, what I said back then, and w what I agree upon today, is to release singles. Release the best songs of your, uh, of your album. At this point, where you're an up-and-coming band, you want to build your audience first. And do not waste it by releasing an album too soon. I mean, you need to build an audience before to have, an, for have people to listen to your album, you know? So, start by releasing singles instead. And, you know, spread out this album and make one opportunity into several opportunities for, uh, for news. Okay? Does this make sense? No? Okay. Some bands, they, they don't release an album, uh, but they tour in already, you know? And uh, make people hungry for the music, and then they release the album, and it's more of an impact. So there's, there's different ways of going about releasing music nowadays. But uh, if you have an album that you're proud of and you're like, hey, hell yeah, I can't wait to get people to listen to it, take a step back, think about your strategy, maybe consider releasing singles instead, and pulling full force. I mean, make videos, make, uh, make everything you can to push this. If you could put just as much heart and soul into actually uh, promoting your album, then uh, I think uh, you probably have a better chance against the competition. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. All right, my friends. I think we're closing in on the end of the Sunday with Ola. Who won the raffle? It's getting announced right now. Congratulations, you little guy, girl out there. You won this signed tab book of Chug Project number three. If you want to support the channel without winning shit for free, you can go to OlaEnglandShop.com. You can buy an album. You can buy a hoodie, t-shirt, cap, whatever. That support goes directly into our channel because we take care of this merch ourselves. It's not like Teespring where you make an order at some distant company and they just ship it to, uh, the, the merch to you. We print the merch at our office and we ship to you guys. With that said, thank you so much for joining in. How's the dog? Hey, Bonnet. Bonnet. All right. Big thing. Hey. 
Hey, how you do? I do. Hey, buddy. So yeah, guys, that's it for Sunday with Ola 206. Thank you so much for hanging in the premiere chat and I'll see you soon, okay? Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> oh,